We are in the last month of 2021 but still, a lot can be accomplished. You may make a business strategy, clean up your closets, destroy paper clutter, and unsubscribe from irrelevant emails. Alternatively, do much less. You may start the new year with a sense of control by taking two tiny steps. You'd be shocked how little thought people give to their goals and how they want to spend their time. I'm an overachiever when it comes to getting things done. I enjoy organizing my life, my priorities, and what's important to me. I become ecstatic when I complete a task. I make to-do lists. Remove them from the list. Make a couple more lists. It boosts my self-esteem every time I complete a task. I'm looking after myself by making and maintaining pledges that I've made. I write down ideas. Ideas that appear out of nowhere. Regarding everything. I read a lot of books. I keep track of my life in short notes here and there, moments I'd like to remember, or lessons I'd like to remember when I'm an elderly hot tie still learning and producing in my 90s. Before we continue with the video, please hit the subscribe button. This way we will feel motivated to continue producing quality content. The two most essential steps to starting a new year on solid footing, to get ready for the future year, you simply need to take two measures right now. This is the very least you can do. This is something I do every year. Every year, I recommend this to my friends and now you too. Make a list of your objectives. This generates a sense of purpose. Get detailed. Write out the details, including how, when, and where you'll take the necessary steps. The benefits of keeping your word to yourself. Keeping promises to oneself has advantages. You honor your commitments to those closest to you, those whom you would never consider canceling or letting down. We often let commitments we make to ourselves lapse while making sure we show up for others. I'm sure you understand what I'm talking about if you have kids. Usually, a goal we have in mind is good for us. We seldom make promises to ourselves that are harmful to our health. We don't hear individuals say things like, in 2022, I'm going to consume more junk food, or in 2022, I'm going to lie on the sofa more and binge watch more Netflix than last year. No, we create healthy commitments that we intend to keep, such as running every other day. Alternatively, I'll write every day. When we stick to our commitments or goals, they shape who we are, and our actions shape our identities. We begin to consider ourselves dependable, robust, serious, and capable of achieving our objectives. When people's actions and beliefs don't match up, cognitive dissonance research shows that they adjust their beliefs to match their actions. Concentrate on your actions in order to achieve your objectives or, as I like to call it, your output. When you violate promises to yourself, you're telling yourself that you don't matter and don't deserve the time you've tried to set aside. Yes, you do. Determine your actions by setting goals. How to keep promises to yourself when setting goals. Making a plan is one approach to keep your promise to yourself. Make good on your commitment to yourself, just as you would any other set of plans, duties, or meetings. Make a plan for it. Make a plan, set aside time, and show up for yourself. Make a commitment to your goals just like you would to any other appointment. Show up for yourself when you set a goal you want to attain, just like you would for a doctor's appointment you arranged a month ago. Believe that you are deserving of it. The more you show up, the more convinced you are that you are worth taking the effort to achieve a goal. Let's look at two common goals that people establish but don't always follow through on. Exercise and writing. I have two commitments that I keep almost every day. Believe me when I say that you will not always want to work out. You won't always want to write. These objectives, however, are critical. Pick two essential goals. You want these goals to inform your identity in six months after turning them into habits. The first step entails. The first step is to put down your objectives. This is the less difficult portion. The second stage is to become more specific. Your objective should be specific and actionable. Don't set a goal for yourself if you can't write for three hours a day. Instead, try writing for 30 minutes every day. If you want to be successful, the first step is to create a habit through repetition, therefore aim for whatever feels doable to you. Begin small. Success is built on small habits. You're setting yourself up for failure if it's not genuinely achievable. Instead of saying something broad like writing every day, be more specific, every week, I will set out two hours to go to the coffee shop and write. Every week on Thursday, I'll do that. When you get that particular, I believe you will. Make a note of it in your calendar. Notify folks in your inner circle of trust that you need to write for two hours outside the house once a week. 
Instead of saying, I'm going to get in shape, say, I'm going to get in shape three mornings a week. Set yourself up for success by changing your habits. Habits help you change your behavior. Over time, repetition of action develops a habit. Writing every day is second nature to me now that I've been doing it for two years and it's become a part of my identity. I'm an author. Everyday resistance can change the habit since it's so ingrained in my identity. Get rid of the friction, anything that makes it harder to perform the action to get to the goal. Remove as much friction as possible, which means setting up your physical existence to make it easier for you to achieve your goals. Pack a gym bag and leave your running shoes by the front door on Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday evenings. One ritual that reduces friction on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings and makes the running portion a no-brainer is having everything ready the night before. You're sticking to the aim, exercise, which you indicated you value. What you've decided is critical to your health and well-being. Setting objectives and making promises to oneself is a life-enriching experience. It's an investment in your own well-being. When you feel better and maintain your promises to yourself, it not only boosts your self-esteem but also benefits everyone around you since you are treating yourself with respect. You're communicating to everyone around you that you value yourself and your objectives. My output is really important to me. It is not selfish to live in this manner. It's about giving to ourselves so that we can give more to others. I'm looking forward to 2022. I'm feeling hopeful for the year that lies ahead. Productivity, setting goals, and keeping commitments allow you to fully step into your life and give value to those things you want to see manifest. Thanks for watching, subscribe and stick around for more quality content on how to improve your life. Till next time.